Okay, so I think we're ready. Next up, Mehdi Lamam from BAMP. Uh, he's going to talk about OpenAPI and Async API working together. Um, so yes, so that's round of, of applause for Mehdi. Hello, hello everyone. So let me start with the first question. Who here already read an API documentation? Pretty much everyone. Cool. Uh, and it doesn't work. Let me do it. Who already uh, written an API documentation? Okay. Have you enjoyed it? No. Okay. <laughs> so I'm uh, Mehdi Lamam, and uh, I read tons of boring and long and outdated API documentations, and I wrote some, and I got bored too. Uh, you can find me pretty much everywhere with this handle. So let's face it, no one loves writing API documentations. But all of us want great API documentation. Uh, this whole discussion reminds me of the time when we uh, challenged the value of writing tests for our code uh, and how much time it took us. And uh, I remember the first time I asked my CTO if I can take some time to write a test a few years ago. He basically looked at it. It was him. <laughs> Say, no. Today, we have some decent tools for testing our code. But for APIs, the story is, is a bit different. Actually, we can kind of separate APIs in two words, public APIs and private ones. Public APIs are a marketing tool. And as you know, marketing is rich. And uh, marketing people invest on writing and publishing good API docs with great designs, with good content, with technical writers, and they also build some custom tools doing so. But for private APIs, it's not a marketing tool, it's only a dev tool, you know, for us, the rest of us, and uh, uh, who cares? Uh, some have tried before. Uh, we got, for example, Blueprint, some people doing it over pull requests. Sometimes we write plain markdown files. We use only Slack to just communicate some changes. Sometimes at the coffee machine. Or the smartest of us just don't write docs. If there is no documentation, there is no problem. Is this something you, you already Lift. We all of us had this moment when we discover a change uh, done by someone else from the team, and oh, now the endpoint is doing this thing and this other thing, and I didn't know. So okay, well, uh, today it's a growing problem because the modern web is changing and we write dozens of APIs. And worse, instead of having only one API to deal with, we invented something named microservices, so we have tons of them. Ah, again, doomed. So let's step back and think about why the previous ways of doing it failed. Actually, mm, it's not only about documentation. Of course, we need documentation. But we also need some upfront design when we build our APIs. We definitely need to communicate changes uh, made in our APIs and announce the changes. Uh, 
we need, we would like to have a continuous way of doing so and validate our API uh, requests and responses and doing some tests. Also, we want to fix this problem of API clients always lagging behind and waiting for uh, the new docs to be updated. And actually, we need a whole ecosystem of tools around uh, our APIs. And um, say it another way, we need to describe our APIs in a consistent fashion. Uh, we need an API spec. Uh, well, a few years ago, a long time ago, uh, Tony invented something named Swagger. I'm sure everyone heard about Swagger. But it's not Swagger anymore. It's named OpenAPI. And you, the latest version of the spec is there. If you want to read it, you definitely should read it. Let me walk you through it very quickly. It's basically a YAML or JSON-based file, uh, machine-readable or human-readable, uh, with a very active community around and baked by some companies and widely adopted today. The core component uh, yeah, of, the, of the YAML file will be this, this, this block info, servers, etc. So, first one, for example, the info is somewhere where you can put some details about the API, the, like me, me, meta details. Uh, okay. Uh, in the servers uh, section, it's about how the users can access your API. You can distinguish production servers, staging, dev, whatever. Then you have paths, and it's what the API can do. Uh, so all your endpoints definitely basically go, goes there. And for each one, you can describe the whole, everything, almost everything, the uh, details of the, like what the endpoint is doing, what parameters are expected, the request, the response, etc. A response, for example, would look like this. Different responses, when, how, anything you can imagine. Uh, here, for example, you can see the, the ref attribute, and you can reference any other, basically anything in the spec, any other component from the spec, even in a, separate, in a different YAML file. So it's pretty handy. Um, well, you'd say, ah, I still have to write all this, and it's not that, that good or that easy. But if you take time to do so, as you take time to write code tests, in a few, in a couple of weeks, you will say, oh, awesome, now I can do so much things based on it. And this is thanks to our, not, not our, but the whole uh, ecosystem around the open API spec, or any kind of spec, actually. So, I am pretty sure your favorite editor got covered with a plugin to help you write the, the, your API description. Uh, you can also use some GUI, like Open API GUI, or uh, Stoplight Studio, uh, Swagger Editor. Of course, you have some linters if you need so. So I mentioned here two well-known ones, very flexible. And uh, of course, you will you need to see the docs generated. So you have pretty much tons of tools swag from Swagger UI, uh, Redoc. The, the first three are open source projects, and the latest one, spoiler, I'm the co-founder of it. It's a hosted service doing doing it for you. 
and all these tools generate a documentation that looks like something similar to this one, uh, readable by, by humans and very nice and uh, well presented. Well, but besides docs, you would like to have mock servers, as Phil mentioned this morning. And uh, from this spec, you can generate a mock server, server to test realistically your API uh, endpoints, even do, do, do some validation or even use it as a sandbox mode before building actually the API, the real one, with a data persistence layer. Well, this is still a work in progress in the uh, Stoplight project, Prism. And uh, you have APIs brought as well. These two, it's as simple as running a Docker container or like just take a look to the readme files and you will see it's one line of, of code. Uh, of course, you will need testing, so you can just import your spec file in Postman, for example, and start testing right away. Or even maybe sometimes you will want to do a vice versa conversion between the open API spec you wrote and some JSON schema objects. The JSON schema objects, you could use them in your code test this way. It's almost the same example than Phil this morning, but I haven't copied him. <laughs> uh, it's Ruby, so you just get something, a device, and you can expect that the response match the device schema, and this device schema is defined based on the JSON schema spec with its properties and types, etc. Pretty handy. Uh, you can also generate your API SDK or clients. You have this tool, for example, Open API Generator that, with, uh, that have adapters or templates for almost all languages. So just take a look. And actually, you have dozens of tools around the spec. And you can get here a curated list of these tools. And you will get everything for free just because you use the spec. And this is the point of my talk, actually. But well. Uh, what about non-RESTful APIs? Open APIs is designed to help you with your RESTful APIs, but sometimes you come from the, an event-based driven world and uh, you use something else. And here we go, you have another one. You have async API built by Fran here. And uh, async API, it's based on the same ideas as OpenAPI, but it's built for uh, event-based APIs. You will find almost the same, uh, it's almost the same spec, as I said, with few differences. Uh, the block info servers looks the same. For example, for servers, you have the the protocol described, it could be IMQP, WebSockets, HTTP, Kafka, almost anything you like. Uh, well, the rest is pretty clear. And you describe in the event-based world, we talk about channels. It's, channels are the mediums uh, where messages flow through, uh, so you describe your channels, how you can subscribe to a channel or publish something to a channel, and what kind of messages are sent, uh, same stuff, and yeah, you describe the payload of your message, and well, 
everything. You describe your API completely. And same way you have uh, tons of tools. Uh, the ecosystem around async API is still growing, not as rich as open API one, but I'm pretty sure it will happen very soon. And you can get in from here a list of tools to do validation, code generation, docs generation, um, as you'd like to do with any other open API based spec. Uh, you have some also specific tools. For example, let's say you'd like to validate on the fly your Kafka messages. Uh, here you go, you have a async API stream project and you can uh, yeah, do real-time validation for your messages. Uh, very nice. But um, how can we make it even nicer? Uh, we wrote a spec and, now, and used some tools and what's then? Actually, the key is to think about specifications as contracts for your APIs and think again about your whole development workflow. And we can imagine something like a spec first or spec driven uh, workflow. First, you start by discussing the design of your API. Then you write the spec using your favorite editor, choosing the the spec you uh, match in your API needs. Then right away you can generate, based from this spec, first docs and a mock API. And start working with the mock API to test it, to refine the spec, to use it in code test if you are doing some TDD or whatever. You can use it right away. Then you will write your actual code. And um, hey, we wrote some code, so, oh wait, we have a CI. Let's move everything to the CI. So I push my code. Of course, it triggers a CI build. Uh, and let's make the CI work for us. The CI validate the spec. It can update docs on in real time, build after build, uh, update your client, basically, but also notifies your teams, build after build, about the changes made in this specific code push or pull request, whatever. And for example, with some tools like Bump, you can just follow through the changes that has been made build after build and visualize a diff of your API actually. And, uh, and as you treated your API specification as code, you can do anything, almost anything. You are developer, so you are the king of the world. You can notify your team about their the actual changes of the API, what has been added, what has been removed. And you get tons of benefits from it. Now your API specification is your contract and is the single source of, tr of uh, tr tr truth. Um, your documentation and your tests are, all, are always up to date now and you just made your workflows a bit better between your uh, backend and uh, API, API clients. And here you go, backend and frontend are friend again. No more war. So, thank you. Anybody got some questions? Oh, too far. <laughs> Just. 
Okay. Hello. Um, I just wanted to know how uh, uh, an async API uh, message uh, compared to a cloud event uh, message. I don't know if you are here about a cloud event specific uh, situation. It's a question for you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a recurring question. <laughs> I uh, don't want to, to take uh, much time. Just briefly, um, uh, async KPI message is, can be anything, even a cloud event uh, message. So uh, it's, we don't have a, uh, we accept anything like JSON schema, Avro, or a cloud event uh, uh, message. Does it sound good? Okay. Any other question? Yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot for the talk. Um, a few questions about the CI aspect that you mentioned. Um, yep. Can you go in more details which tools you would use? Um, for instance, also the, the testing of API generated from, from Open API? Mm, yeah, almost all the tools I mentioned uh, give you a CLI. Uh, so you can just, in your CI, whatever, Circle CI, Travis, or the GitLab, or any, 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 any CI, you will just run some command lines, uh, doing validation, failing or not the CI, pushing some new code, update to the clients, uh, or if you use uh, a hosted service like Bump, you will just use Bump CLI to validate, to deploy, to notify, etc. So yeah. Are there any, any um, open source tools to generate tests, unit tests, I guess, for, uh, from, from Open API? Uh, I know a few in the Ruby world uh, that can take an Open API spec and generate uh, tests and run the tests. You can run the tests uh, um, from your CI hitting a staging server or a mock server. Um, I can't remember. I, I will give you the name of, of it. Can't remember the exact name. Dread testing. Okay. Sorry. Say it again. Dread. Yes. The, na the name of the tool is Dread. Yeah. Uh, I think we got uh, time for more questions. Yeah. Um, is uh, async API um, open sourced or um, is about to be standardized? Standardized. Yes. Uh, open source, yes, and it's definitely uh, a stand the aim of, of async API is to be the, a, specific, a standard specification to describe even, ba even driven or even based APIs. Is it uh, the new name for Swagger Socket or something like this? So sorry? Swagger Socket. My so your socket IO, it was an old um, project on GitHub. I don't about know. messaging. Fran, do you no. know? No. no. I've never heard about it. Promise. <laughs> 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 okay. I look at it. Swagger socket, you say. Swagger socket? Socket. Okay. 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 <laughs> Questions here? Okay. In in real life uh, APIs, uh, uh, you have to um, to to ensure that you call uh, in certain order, uh, certain uh, endpoints. Uh, so, uh, how the spec and how the tools can help you with that uh, to to sequence uh, the calls in in the right way? Uh, well, I guess um, if you need to write a spec that like a test, testing in sequence some API calls, you will just write a script uh, in your CI or, or your code and hit the mock server or staging one. But I'm not, yeah, I'll let you maybe. <laughs> yes, I'm allowed. <laughs> Look in OpenAPI v3 at the notion of links. Links allow you to tie operations together. Oh, right. So you can take the output of one operation and use it to drive the other. That is one way of being able to define workflows within uh, OpenAPI. So you could imagine, uh, you could imagine uh, automatizing uh, tests 
to to uh, to run a specific sequence that follows this, the links that have been defined from one operation to the next. Okay, thank you. Cool. So I think um, we don't have time for more questions. Uh, let's uh, go for a break and big round of applause for Mehdi.